when we make it safe to fail, we make it safe to succeed. This is a beautiful book I just found at a coffee shop called Trying. And I literally was crying in the coffee shop. I couldn't not buy this. This is such a beautiful book by Kobe Yamada. And there is it's just some good, potent, creative energy in the air, but a different kind of creative energy. And I cannot wait to share all the things. Welcome to a Meathead Hippie podcast. You might be listening or you might be watching because I do have a visual presentation for you today, especially for my belugas or a deer who needs a little bit of visual stimulation because that's just how I live my life through this bird quiz, which we'll talk about more. But I am so happy you're here. I'm Emily Schramm. And I am living in a van. So this is all about my month in a van. I did not expect to be in a van. And yet here we are because you just follow your heart and the signs. And then all of a sudden it shit works out. And I couldn't believe what happened in a month. I'm about to already get my 5,000 mile oil check, which is crazy. So I've been across most of the East coast and still feel like I've barely even scratched the surface of van life because it's only been a month. Uh, and the only way for me to really share this is to go through the, the photos and the whole entire process. So I put together a little shared album that I'll be sharing, but I know it'll translate over podcasts as well, because there's so much that has happened and so much we're moving through and so many pieces that I wish to share with you today. So thank you for being here and just like, wow, what a trip that we are all on. And I want to start with what I just said about trying and succeeding and failing in this beautiful book, Trying called trying because there's two things happening in my life and I want to just treat them equally because they're both really important. The first one is this deep desire to follow the impulses and follow my heart. There's little Gryffindor Hemingway. He's doing so good in van life, you all. So good. I'm so proud of him. Today, I stopped at a a beautiful park called Castlewood in St. Louis, Missouri. And I had the door open. It's chilly. Winter's coming. And he was just sitting there looking at this tree. I was meditating. And this little tiger shoots out of the van full sprint, runs up the tree five feet. I mean, it was to, it would have been to my neck, right? Like straight up bear, bear hugging this tree held on meowed into the wilderness, crawled down, and then got back in the van. Like, dude, you're so cool. <laughs> get it out, Griff, get it out. So there's just this, okay, back to the two things. There is the number one thing, which is when we just follow our bliss and our heart and we create not for anything other than just to create because that's who we are, creating music, creating podcasts, creating poetry, uh, creating, you know, just in general, it could be a meal, you know, there's something about using your brain creatively and, and producing something not for production sake, but for the sake of letting your body live in that bliss that is so important. And when we are in that bliss, and then we think too far out too long term, what the end goal is of why we're creating how we're going to get it out there or what it's going to look like, or really what's the point we end up stopping ourselves. And I wrote about this in an Instagram caption. It's a dead end. If we think about it too far out. So that's one thing. One thing I'm thinking about is that I didn't have a huge plan when I got this van, which I'll share more about in the pictures, but I knew there was no way I could sign a lease anywhere else. There was just not one place that felt like home. So I had to create the home. And so I found a red van for my root chakra and here we are. And if I would have thought of it too far out or the long term, I think I would have stopped. I don't know actually, but who would have who knows? But you cannot think too far out sometimes because your heart doesn't have logic. It has heart. <laughs> it has everything but the brain and we're too much in our brain. So the whole point right now is to take our brain and our head or Ajna and push it into our body, into our solar plexus if we can. So that's one thing I'm really thinking about. And yet at the exact same time, this wild 
phenomenon is happening where as a creator and a business owner who has created brands and small businesses and products and, you know, just all these things, this kind of crazy life I've lived for the last 12 years of just not just creating, but helping people through that, but then also having products on the other side of it. So tangible things that use resources because everything comes from something, right? Energy comes from energy and cotton comes from cotton. And it's a plant that I just saw in North Carolina and leather comes from animal. And there's not anything that we live in, breathe in, participate in that doesn't come from resources, mother earth specifically. And so then we have on this other hand, this beautiful phenomenon of creating and sparking and being an entrepreneur, yet not thinking long-term of the consequences of taking those resources and not replenishing them and having a one-sided conversation. So my tea company being an example or my backpack company, right? These are resources that are being created from nothing being pulled from the ground, yet what is the give back? And if we look at that at a large scale and everyone doing that, then we have a problem. We have a very big problem. So there's this like need for more individual creative spark without pulling resources and without something super tangible, just creation to create and letting your life force come through you and be expressed. And at the exact same time, making sure that what is expressed, if it is something tangible, comes back in reciprocity and full cycle, whether that means there's a give back or whether that means there is a pause in the production or whether that means there is an equal give as there is take. So there's just this potent portal that we're all in learning how to create ourselves, learning how to be more sustainable, learning how to be more regenerative. And then me in this wild turn of events, realizing I want my own home right here. I want everything to be simplified. I want to just feel the freedom I've always felt externally and internally to be so literal and so tangible so that I can be in the flow And it's so beautiful just having this instinct be the thing that you have to listen to, right? What campsite? Does does this feel good? Nope. Move on. What coffee shop? That sounds good. Yes. And just like, oh, I'm going to go here because it's 33.3 miles away. Or, oh, I'm going to go here because it's 44 miles away. And not being in our head of overthinking of, is this the right decision? Is this not the right decision? And thank God it's not Libra season because we all know that Libra would make it really hard to make that decision super clear. But regardless, it's this flow of trust and really using our left foot first. So I wrote about this in the Meathead Hippie Empress. If you haven't downloaded it, please download it. It is free and it's all of the things I've kind of created up to this point in tangible form that will help you at whatever part of your healing journey you're on. So maybe you need a meal plan. Maybe you need some help with meal prep. Maybe you need help with your hangriness, which is not a good thing, right? We're, we're breaking cycles of blood sugar dysregulation and stabilizing it in order to get more in touch. There's layers, there's physical, there's nutrition, there's digestion, there's adrenal, there's stress, there's energetics. And we just keep going wherever you are starting and wherever you're going on this path, we just keep going because we're all going to get to the same place. So the Meathead Hippie Empress is free to download. Go download it on my website, emilyshram.com. It's all linked below. And then also reading that article that I wrote that is just really about this left side, right? This feminine, beautiful chance <laughs> to not be so in logic, not be so in our head, not be so literal, which is a little bit more of a masculine approach. So just having the time of my life, learning about what that means and being in a, in a clip season and being in these really intense changes, including Scorpio season and death and rebirth and going to a farm and doing a lamb harvest and just being really intimate with the food that I'm eating and also questioning everything. (laughs) I mean, it's powerful and it's good. And I think if we're not in a place of transit, then we're not paying attention. We should all feel a little bit 
icky, not icky. Sorry, that's a bad way. We should, we should feel the grit. We should feel the irritation. We should feel the push because that is what gets us to one change two transform three have a motherfucking pearl on the other side, right? There is a gift that's always waiting. And so we listen, we lean into that. We don't run away from it. So I am just so grateful. I've had two wonderful interviews in the van, many more to come and many more travels to come. But without further ado, let's just move into uh, this little shared screen so that you can, oh, geez, hold on. This is not what I wanted. So you can come right alongside with me in the van. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that you can see this. If you're listening, I apologize because I'm just fumbling with this. Okay, so here we go. So we, if you wanted to watch this, again, this is all on YouTube. You can easily watch this, but I wanna share this in a way that is also fun to listen to, which might be an impossible challenge, but I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> so let me make sure this is ready to go. Oh, it's not even ready to go. Okay, here we go. This is a shared album of my first month in Ixchel. First off, let me tell you about Ixchel. I-X-C-H-E-L. Originally, I was going to name this band Cardinal. And then I realized Cardinal is just a state of being. It's a starter. I'm a triple Cardinal sign. And Cardinals were with me this morning. And they are so connected connected to my family. I don't know if you feel the same way about Cardinals, but they follow my grandma, they follow my mom, and maybe when I pass, they will follow my lineage. <laughs> they are just the most beautiful, beautiful birds. And I just love this idea of being a triple Cardinal sign of starting things. And so I knew it was something about Cardinal energy, but Cardinal was not her name. Ixchel was her name. And Ixchel is a Mayan goddess who is just all about the medicine bag healing. And when you look in my van and maybe one day you'll get to see it at a pop-up or a trash pickup or herb harvest, there is so much in here that I just know if you have an ailment, I can help. I have flower essences, I have herbs, I have teas, I have supplements, I have tinctures, and I have all the energy that I could give for you because that is what this really feels like. And what's really beautiful too is that Ixchel can call out rain and she's just so powerful. And so one of the things that I'm really setting the intention of is if it needs to rain at a place, I will come and do rain ceremonies and hopefully gather people who want to do rain ceremonies with me because we can draw down rain. We can do it two ways. We can do it by planting more plants. And so as much as I understand this whole carnivore eat more meat movement, like it is so important for us to understand where plants and vegetation play a role in drawing down the rain. And we can do that in such a powerful way. So we plant more, we plant more vegetables, we plant more herbs, we appreciate the plants that we have. And then we do some motherfucking rain ceremonies, which I have been doing and loving. And that's a whole other thing that we can talk about at some point. But this is my first day getting Ixchel. So just a quick little recap that Ixchel, my Winnebago Solace Pocket is a red, beautiful van that I knew when I was in, <laughs> I knew it when I was in Colorado and I was like, oh yeah, this is happening. I'm going to get I'm going to get a van and it has to be red because it has to be my home. I'm a cancer moon. So I need to feel rooted. I need to have a chakra grounded thing. And that's the color of red. It, it just felt like home. And then that day, the day that I sent it or said that, <laughs> my sister sent me the listing for this van. So this is at L Lixen's RV. It's actually only a mile from the original Winnebago. So if you're familiar with vans in Winnebago, Winnebago. Winnebago is like the OG creator of RVs and van life. And the home of Winnebago is like where this dealership was. So I go from St. Louis, I fly to Des Moines, Iowa. I take a shuttle two hours north, get to Forest City, Iowa, pick up the van. It's the first time seeing it. 
it was love at first sight. I knew this was the van and it totally was. And so this instantly, as I'm driving away, it rains, which was such a good sign. And of course a rainbow, which I just felt like was extra special in an October of Iowa. Rainbows are so important for me. They're important for everyone. When you see them, I really hope you appreciate them. But for me, because I spent so much time in Hawaii, uh, rainbows, of course, are the alignment. They're the chakras. They're the healing of the chakras. But they're also just like, if you really dig into it, Chiron and the rainbows of the bridges and just like seeing seeing yourself as a bridge is so important for like how we can help be light workers in the world, which is just so cool that this just all started to show up the first day I got it. So the omens were there. I was on track. Uh, this is me on the first night. So I assumed, so I didn't take Griff obviously on the plane that that was a big jump and he's not a car cat normally so I'll share a little bit about that but I didn't have any layers and it was raining slash starting to snow that day that I got <laughs> this van so I went to I think it was, it was TJ Maxx or Marshall's it was one of those and I just saw every soft thing I'm just like how do I prepare this van for Griff to want to feel like it's home so my whole entire shopping experience was just to make Griff feel comfortable. And so these are the fuzzy blankets that I got. As you can see behind me, if you're watching, it has been just so fun to like bring my entire home into this van and make it home. And it feels like a little eggshell, like eggshell, like the shell of I. And so, so about this winter, you know, it's winter. We're supposed to be in a womb and nesting and in a cave. And even though we're not outputting a lot, we're still creative, right? So it, this is so what it feels like. It feels like my little turtle shell. Okay, this is the first night. So I will say in a van, there, this Winnebago Solace Pocket is dope. It's kind of the plug and play van for van life. So you can get it custom built and you can get it. You, there's so many vans for sale if you go to Craigslist and they're all expensive it's just like whoa that's a that's like six motorcycles <laughs> oh, yeah what you know whatever you reference it to but the solus pocket it has everything that you need you know it has a propane gas uh propane heater that connects to the two stovetops so really nice stovetop oven not oven you know what i'm saying it's like stovetop Skillet. I don't, why do I have a hard time understanding that? I always say it weird. There's a fridge, the bed goes up and down. And so it's really easy to have more room, less room. I, I have like a really big fetish for sweeping every chance I get. I love, it's like such an energetic clearing when I sweep and it's such a small space. So it's really fun to do, but like clearing out the energy, I have to sage and clean this thing out a lot. It's like constantly getting cluttered right so there's a lot of things happening in a small space so you have to really like get I'm, I'm not a super organized person like I have my quirks and so I have my piles of things and then I just constantly am reorganizing those piles and saging it out and moving the energy uh, but the one thing this does not have is a well-equipped bathroom and so I just still feel like <laughs> haven't gotten comfortable pooping in the van and then like are you really a van lifer if you don't poop in your van and right now that means I'm not a van lifer so this is the first night where I was like I'm just not ready for that and I'm still not ready for it and there's different types of toilets which we can get into at some point but the toilet that this came with I would not I would not recommend for pooping because it's just so weird it's like not a poop in a bag thing it's like a I, there's just no way I'm just not doing it so side tangent this is just like things that you learn in a van very quickly your comfort level so this was the first place I just had a document Black Hawk Park was the first place I stayed and it was just a one night the first time I got to plug in and I felt so official it was um, spot number three 33. And even that first night was like wildly intimidating, right? Where do you park your van and how do you plug in? And once you do it once, it's so easy. It's really comfortable and everyone's so nice. And actually, I really haven't talked to a lot of people as far as neighbors go, except for one place I'll show you, which was my favorite place I've camped at in North Carolina. 
but uh, Black Hawk Park just felt special because Hawk energy is so strong in my life. And also it was named after Chief Black Hawk of the So Indian tribe. And it was just all about his love for nature. And it said, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. And I really just keep coming back to this idea that I am just in the flow of nature, which is why I'm so content with man life and just being able to look at the moon and keep the doors open and see the stars and hear the wind and feel like I am as grounded and as rooted as possible because I'm just connected to earth is so important. And so finding parks and finding places where I can bird watch is really what's giving me so much life. And also this is a side note, but something really important that I had just reset my phone at a Verizon store for the hotspot. And when I screenshotted this, you'll notice at the top, it says 5G. But as soon as you are able to, and you can do this right now, you can actually change your cellular service so that the 5G isn't activated. And it just is something that to me, even though there's 5G all around me, knowing that the impact of what it's having on birds and bees is a real thing is important enough for me to turn that off. And it could definitely have an impact on my own anxiety levels. And it could just be completely placebo. I don't care. I know enough to know that that's going off. So when I screenshotted this, it existed, but that is a setting you can change. So I highly recommend changing it if you can. And then I get to go. So I went, started from Iowa and then I got to go through, I'm going back to St. Louis to go pick up Griff. So this is the adventure of getting the cat in the van. And I guess I should say my cat's Gryffindor Hemingway. He's a six fingered polydactyl. I'm not a cat person. I'm a Griff person. I never thought I'd love cats. I got a cat 13 years ago when I first moved to Denver because I really worked a lot, couldn't have a dog and had a client when I was working at 24 hour fitness at the front desk, he came in and his name was Griff. And as soon as I saw his name pop up, it was just like this lightning bolt hit my head. And it was like, you need to get a cat and name him Gryffindor. And so I was like, Oh my God, I need to get a cat and name him Gryffindor. And I didn't even know what that meant. And then I went to all these cat places and I was like, oh my God, I'm not a cat person. I can't do this. And then I went into Petco and there he was. He was just like, oh, he's just such a cool cat. Everyone who meets him loves him. So I understand if you're not a cat person, but like Griff is not a cat. He is a protector from some sort of galaxy. <laughs> So anyway, back to this photo, I am in front of Gabby and her pet, her dog. Gabby is a farmer. She's been in regenerative farming for a long time. So she's episode 150 on Meathead Hippie. And we just had a wonderful conversation about dairy farming. And she worked at Al Gore's farm, which is super cool. So here's just a few pictures of her and a video of me getting followed by cow number eight he had she just she sorry she she's a milk cow so it's a she she had a little tag number eight and she just kept following me and like nudging at my butt and I'm like you yeah, of course you're number eight I get it because eight is so great it's just my little lucky omen uh but I had so much fun this is her cute dog just talking to her for the first time in my van realizing like this is what I'm doing I'm gonna podcast people in my van and this is so dope uh, so just having the time of my life, but also trying to navigate, you know, I work online, I'm remote completely. So, well, I have platform strength in Denver, so that's not remote, but for the most part, like my, I still need to be very plugged in. So I'm learning the Wi-Fi and where to get Wi-Fi and just all of the things. So Denny's was my first spot. So shout out to Denny's for being my first workstation. They need so much help with tea. They have horrible tea selections. I said, what tea do you have? She said, tea. <laughs> so just so you know, tea is all from, so there, well, there's herbal tea, which is actually technically called a tisane, T-I-S-A-N-E, a tisane. And then there is tea, which people might know as black tea, green tea, puer tea, uh, any sort of like tea that is caffeinated, but it comes from one plant, Camellia sinensis. I did a podcast on puer tea if you're interested. 
which is a really beautiful tea because it's an alive tea. It, it doesn't actually oxidize. So it has, it's been shown to help with a lot of myriad of health issues because it has those antioxidants kind of like probiotics, but regardless, all tea, if you are drinking tea comes from one plant, it just is the process that changes it. And then there's herbal tea. So maybe one day I can get Denny's to have some herbal teas, hopefully regeneratively grown from local sources. So here's this video. I just want to share this. This is, if you're listening, this is just me literally opening the door and looking outside at my van and just being like, oh my God, tomorrow I start my journey. <laughs> this is me living. This is going to be my home. And I will say this is so beautiful because the seasons were changing and I was at Forest Park in St. Louis right before I went to go get this van. And there was another option for a green van, which I thought maybe would be good. I like that I'm just completely deciding my van based on color, but that's, you know, yeah. sometimes you got to do it by color and green was heart chakra. So I was like, well, it's my book and the process and the bird quiz. So maybe it is, but as I'm meditating on this at the park, every single tree around me was bright green and turning red. It felt like before my very eyes and it was so clear. It's like, nope it's fall. It's going to be red. So I chose the red one, but it was so beautiful driving through these like amazing places that I'll share like Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Carolinas, like it, while these seasons are changing. I mean, it was just so gorgeous. This is an adorable video that I have that is my grandma as I'm driving. So the cool thing about the Solus Pocket is you feel like you're driving an airplane. So you're like really tall and there's lots of windows. And then the rear view mirror is actually an, an entire camera for behind you. So as I'm driving, I actually get a call from my grandma and she said, look behind you. This is my badass grandma, 89 years old and just driving her car, waving at me on my way home, just like to show her the van and pick up Griff. It was just so cute. And then at the same time as I'm doing this, so I, this is a little teaser of Meathead Hippie Empress. So I put together, yeah, this like little collection of here was my life before this moment. And there's so much goodness in this. If you haven't downloaded it, it's a digital publication. You can download it through emilystrom.com with just your email and you'll get this little quick teaser and then you can download the full file or read it like a magazine or go through Canva links, whatever way makes sense for you. But it's a very big file. So it didn't work in just one download, but it's a way for you to really see what parts that you need to focus in on and get some support in. It's just a great resource for you or anyone you love who's just needing some all in one support and just kind of to launch this whole beautiful thing. So me and my mom, we went to the farmer's market. Uh, we went and got one more batch of goodies. And so really starting to think about how do I eat in the van? Where do I get my vegetables and my fruit? And how do I find these sources and starting a database and a collection of local foods and fruits and veggies. I started to see people saying hi and bye at the same time. So this is Hillary who co-wrote uh, my book, the process. She did all the sketches. I just love her to death. And she was actually in St. Louis. She's, she lives in LA and happened to be in St. Louis. So she was the first person I got to show my van to. And just like, just feeling so loved and supported, you know, about this whole thing and just feeling like, yes, this is right. And when you're in a new transition and things feel easeful, then you just keep leaning in, you know, that's what it is. We're trying to find ease and bliss. We're not trying to make more mountains. So there's just really important things that we're listening to. And hold on, I'm going to turn off my heater, which is so cool that my heater is so easily functioning because it is winter and I'm grateful for it, but it does have some bad background noise. Okay. So then I'm stocking up the van. I got Griff in it. So this is how I got Griff accustomed, uh, accustomed to van life. I mean, look at this picture, look at this little munchkin. So Griff was in van life first night by just using the van as a home, all the soft blankets, all the cushions, and then trying to get him to see it as a comfortable place for him to rest before I started moving it. So we did one night in the van, just Tim and I, no movement. And then it was perfect because my sister brought her dog over and 
her dog scares the shit out of Griff. And so he was like, I need out. And so he saw the van as a little sanctuary. And that was perfect because then all of a sudden the van became a safe place, right? So you just, if you have an animal that you're trying to get adjusted, you need to see it as comfort and you need to see it as safety. And then you can have a little bit of a better time transitioning him. So those are the two things that happened that made Griff a little bit more ready, I think, for van life. And also, you know, our animals are our mirrors. And so if we're having a mirror of us, and our pet is really anxious or having a hard time, we just look internally. Okay, am I having a hard, a hard time? Am I anxious? Am I restless? Is he just mirroring back to me how I feel? So if I'm going to be good with this, if, he, if this is the right thing, he will adjust, right? That's the, that's the decision that needs to be made. And it is true. Uh, so here's a beautiful photo. Just one more look saying bye to my mom, saying bye to my beautiful grandma. And then we're off on the road and just, he's doing so great. It's like really all I cared about in this moment was how do I take care of Griff? So he was doing really great. Um, so just kind of like nutrition 101, some of the things that I really am just obsessed with are BCAAs in the, uh, in my water, just like, especially in the morning, especially if I'm driving a lot and I'm, I don't have high activity and I mix them with element salts, LMNT. So if you want to try BCAAs, use the code meathead hippie. And if you want to try the element salts, you can go to drink element.com slash meathead hippie, and you'll get a uh, 15% off. And they are just so good for electrolytes, for sodium, for potassium. And then for my BCAAs, it's all the amino acids. So I should really call it essential amino acids, but um, BCAAs is what it says. And it's just a really great way for me to have the brain focus without caffeine to make sure I'm not losing my muscle. <laughs> and to just really feel like I can fast without having a drop in blood sugar. And my blood sugar is on point. I just got my blood tested and I'm crushing it. So I feel really good about this uh, cyclical um, intermittent fasting. It's very Impala of me. If you've taken the bird quiz, if you haven't, we'll get to that at some point, I'm sure. And here we go. So um, right away, I stopped in Indiana. So I went through Illinois, no stopping, and then found Indiana. And I had a beautiful friend named Sarah, who actually this year uh, is her first year of surviving, or, you know, finishing a whole year of being in remission of breast cancer. So at a very young age, 31, Sarah was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it was really intense. It was um, one of those things where it's like, this can happen to anyone. And she is such a gem. She has a podcast called Facing Fear with Sarah. And we met up at Lifetime Fitness and had a great workout. So here's us doing handstands. And then we just like really had the most badass workout. Oh, sorry. God, that was loud. Um, I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> my bad. There is a video of us running and I want to share a little bit about running really fast, but I'm just so proud of Sarah and just so in love with who she is and having the ability to be brave and push through and also just really sharing her story. So she has a bunch of stuff you can learn about, but I will say really fast that lifetime fitness, if you don't get a free pass through your friend, Sarah, because she's a teacher there, uh, it was a $50 drop in when I went to the one in Georgia. I'm like, I like, that's crazy. Like this is Equinox prices, which are already ridiculous and hoity toity. So that was a no for me. I was like, wait, five zero. <laughs> so I have lots of good gym recommendations, but for drop-ins lifetime might not be one of them. Okay. So this video that I just shared, uh, which hopefully didn't blast your ears too much is of a running video. So throughout this process, I have been running. I love learning how to run, right? So these shoes maybe aren't the best I'm running in chucks in this video, but I have been really conscientiously learning how to run correctly, which means through not heel striking and using my hamstrings and rotating and all of these beautiful things that I've learned this year. So it's just been really interesting because I was running more and more and then something happened. So dot, 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 we'll get to that point at some point, but this was me when I was at my peak running, I felt so good. So just enjoying like 
feeling like I could go to a campground and run. And here's a good little exercise if you want. So med ball rotational twist. And this is just, I'm just showing you this because in workouts, so many of us are linear, like up and down and side steps and lunges and blah, blah. I guess side steps are this way, but there is something to be said about especially healthy driving and really driving through, you know, I'm like in a weird posture all the time. And so I do a lot of chin tucks. I do a lot of side to side where I'm driving. I literally even stretch my eye fascia. So I go all the way to the right and to the left. And I obviously I have to stay safe, but I'm just trying to work on lateral because when we're always up and down, we also limit our perspective. And so this is really important when we're looking at thinking of new ideas and being creative. You know, we have to move out of the singular plane of no, of motion. So I always get creative and I love once you find the comfort of building your own body or what I call BYOB and strength training, you can learn using the bird quiz and using your own pain and anything you're getting, you know, kind of moving through, whether it's shoulder or knee or injury to get creative. And that's what I love about driving and finding places. It's like finding nature, seeing birds, going to good gyms if I don't want to work out outside or if it's too cold, or if I want to weight train, and finding matcha. <laughs> it's so fun. Life is so cool. <laughs> okay, here's Sarah and I doing handstands. Um, here's me eating a kohlrabi. So like leaning into your cravings. So again, once you have the foundations of blood sugar, and you're really working through the basics of nutrition, which you can learn about in Meathead Hippie Empress or in any of my podcasts that I've done in my life, you can really start to lean into cravings. And I swear, when you are craving vegetables, your zinc levels are on point. If you hate vegetables, increase your zinc, see what happens. Get my essentials pack. My Empirica essentials pack it includes B vitamins, omega-3, D3, K2, magnesium and zinc. And it's a powerful way to get your basics. Even if you did it for a month, it's a 30 day supply and it's so good, but I'm, I'm craving kohlrabi. So for me, that meant I was needing some sulfur and here's my first meal. So I'm cooking my first meal. I, I stopped and got, um, some salmon at Costco and I found some grass fed grass finished beef and lots of local veggies and just like cooking in the van. I set off the smoke alarm. So the smoke alarm no longer exists especially when you're going to sage every day in Palo Santo that that had to go as fast as possible, but it was such a good experience. It was really easy. And I just like, Oh my God, I can totally do this. So moving into, Oh, here's a cute little camel before we go any further. Camel energy is so cool. I freaking love camels. They're so connected to llama. My sister has a lot of camel. Michelle is very camel energy. And when I think of camel and what that means is obviously number one, think about the humps on their back, right? They have all the resources that they need. All the water is right there and they are really ready to go on a long journey. So they are such endurance beings and they're really willing to do what it takes to get to the other side. So I really called in camel, my first big meditation in this van, because I wanted to just that energy is right on with what I'm doing. Like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going to get my next water, but I got some water on my back and I'm going to be okay. <laughs> uh, and then the artwork is so incredible. So cardinals everywhere, just really enjoying my yarrow, my herbs, just taking my tinctures, learning as much as I can with my books finding local fruit. So pawpaws, if you haven't heard of pawpaws, there's some really beautiful history with pawpaws. I just found out about it this year and it started showing up everywhere. So pawpaws, what I feel like are the only tropical fruit that survived winter, like the ice storm. And when you see the plant, it looks like it's, it should be in Maui. So it's this gorgeous plant and it's just got so much bright greenery and it's like a mango and a banana got mashed together and there's seeds in it. So people don't like it because we're such oh, people, man, we just need things to be conveniently perfect. Like a banana, which is like the most destructive monocropped fruit in our entire <laughs> century. But you know, let's not talk about that right now. We'll get into that in more podcasts. 
And then I got a stop in Ohio. So this is me in Ohio. And I really just had such a beautiful time because I was meeting two people. This is Jennifer. Jennifer co-created the bird quiz with me. So we stopped, we saw our favorite plant pine, took lots of pictures, did some plant identification, learned some things from each other. And Jennifer is a shaman through and through. She's a very powerful being. If you need any astrology support or Reiki, if you go to vibrateatyourtruth.com, that's Jennifer's website. And she just wants people to vibrate at their truth. You know, what's their North star, not what you think is your North star, what's your truest true. And she does such a good job of pulling that out of people. And so the bird quiz was really about understanding how do we help be our own healers. There's too much fucked up systems. Like every system that exists right now is crumbling for a reason because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, take in consideration the full person, all of our parts, you know, all the parts of us, we might have one part that we really emphasize, but the way to healing is emphasizing the other parts that we don't want to see or that we don't know how to access. So the bird quiz is really about recognizing this bird energy, this Aquarius energy of eagle eye, hawk eye, seeing things from bigger perspectives, calling in and transitioning in this really hard time that we're in, whatever we're dealing with, the struggle, the suffering, you know, the bird energy is about lifting and getting above that and getting into either the shadows or the light, whether that's the owl or the eagle or the hummingbird. There's so much, there's not one person who doesn't love birds. And if you don't love birds, then I don't want to know you because something's wrong, right? So there's this powerful energy, which is bird, right? We'll call it bird tribe. Getting a little cold in here. I'm going to put my new jacket on. So that's one, one way of the bird quiz coming into existence is knowing that we want to help people tap into that energy. And yet at the exact same time, you know, when you look at the ecological outcome verification that people talk about in regenerative agriculture, where you look at species indicators of how wildlife, plant life is doing in order for us to see if the world is becoming a better place, if the world is regenerating, if we are actually in reciprocity with Mother Earth, we're not just stripping and seeing things slowly degrade. The ecological outcome verification, whether that's through Savory Institute or just looking at nature and indicators, species indicators, the number one greatest way to do that if the if the area is thriving is to look at the birds and the species of birds as a whole. There's no species that's been more impacted, gone more extinct, become more <laughs> directly impacted by environmental Uh, circumstances by the way that we live our life by the consumer production and go 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 and take 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 we see how that's impacting birds more than anything else and there's more species that are obviously impacted across the board this is just the story of human and animal and life interaction it's us versus them and it's takers and leavers right but birds are the way to see if a, a life force is thriving or if an area is thriving and when we see birds we appreciate them because they're they're showing us that there's health in the ecosystem and so as they are becoming extinct another push to say no like we are we are going to take every chance we can to heal self to heal the world and to make this world a better place this is truly like for the birds so it felt metaphorical and so literal and oh there's a bird right outside (laughs) they they love the bird quiz every time i talk about the bird quiz a hawk shows up so it's just like i just listen to it and i lean into it because it's such a beautiful way for me to move through my moods And the way you use it is you take it and you get a percentage of beluga, impala, rattlesnake, and deer. And these are non-birds, right? But the goal is for us to find our wings through this. So the beluga energy is more of the water, impala is more of the fire, rattlesnake is more of the air, and deer is the earth. And it's more than just, here's your archetype and here's a way to see what percentage you are. If you go into that publication, you're going to get so much information 
even though it, it might not make complete sense, just read it because there's ways to use it as preventative. So say I'm mostly beluga, even if I'm the, a little higher percentage beluga than the rest, that's what I lean into. And I'm going to make sure that preventative support for beluga sound healing, playing my ukulele, singing, jumping in water, water therapy, staying hydrated, learning something, all of these preventative things I'm, I'm going to start doing. And it really helps my brain. It helps my dopamine levels. It helps me stay more balanced. And then if I'm out of balance, say I'm having a very bad beluga day, then you learn how to move to the other archetypes. So if I'm a beluga out of balance, I don't do the beluga medicine. I move to rattlesnake. If I'm a rattlesnake out of balance, I move to impala. So if I'm a rattlesnake stuck in my head, I'm not going to write. I'm going to go dance. I'm going to go drum. I'm going to go get it out of my body, get into my body, get out of my head. And then if I'm an impala and I'm too, too fire, I ground that shit with deer. And I get grounded through audio meditations or guided meditations or just touching a damn tree. And then if I'm a deer and I'm feeling too heavy, I move to beluga. So it's a beautiful cycle that has been really how I live my life, how I, I do my workouts, how I take my supplements. And I would be happy to share if you have questions to make sure you know how to use it in a way that really helps because it is so fun to really dive into and get curious about. So here's Jennifer and then also Holly. Holly is the designer for everything I've done the last five years. Daydream Co. If you want to designer but don't use her too much I mean use her as much as you want she's dope tell her I sent you daydream co if you just google it okay and then here is just like okay I'm adjusting to the fact that I am living in a van and sitting a lot so here's a few workouts I'm going to show you that are just really helpful for hip openers but I want to start by saying this video that I'm showing right now is me picking up trash. And I think this is so important. So I created a backpack turn weight training bag called the MPAC. And it uses water as weight. And it's all about evolving your motion and the world is your gym, right? So evolve motion. But what really evolve motion is going to turn into evolve motion 2.0. And I'm manifesting this somehow, some way is that if we are in nature and experiencing nature and getting so much out of nature and talking about how much nature's changing us, which is good. I'm not, I'm just being a little bit sarcastic, but you know, there's a lot of us that and we appreciate nature, but we need to also understand that we can't just take from nature. So every time you're in nature, experiencing it, loving it, going on a walk, going on a hike, surfing, what would it look like if you just picked up the trash? It's just one tiny way to show reciprocity to Mother Earth because it's the only thing that I know how to do in this moment. And it's so helpful because there's trash everywhere. And there's such a way for us to start that conversation. And I, I can't get over how much trash there is, period. So just knowing Evolve Motion is going to turn into like, take your MPAC and yes, work out and be in nature and get grounded. But also like, be reciprocal, give as much as you take. And that to mother earth looks like picking up trash. And that's what I was doing in this video, if you could watch. And also so, like really wide sumo deadlifts are really helpful. Uh, lots of single leg work, really helpful if you're sitting a lot and more in the video. And so then I get to Virginia. So Virginia was really, really beautiful. Virginia was a farm that my friend Jaylene was working at with Daniel Griffith and Morgan. Uh, they have three kids. And here is my first morning waking up at that farm. And this was just really important because, again, if you're going to eat meat, like you really better be okay with the process of what it takes to get that meat on your plate. And so this was really hard for me, period. And I'm still processing it. There's still a lot that I want to share about this, but when we are in Scorpio season and it's death and rebirth, and we also are participants in eating meat, if we eat meat, then we need to really understand that this is a life being taken. And when you are a part of the harvest and a part of that experience, you see it in such an intimate way that you will never look at meat the same again. And it was really hard. The first time I did it was with a turkey with a force of nature. And then here at Daniel Griffith's farm with a lamb. 
and I'm still processing it because it was just so intense and emotional. And as soon as it happened, I mean, I passed out. It was like my nervous system was like out. I was really like, wow, that impacted me. And I, I think what it really means is that we care about the sources of meat. We ask questions and we can get to the farm as fast as we can. And even more importantly, we don't get grossed out by things like liver or cow tongue. <laughs> which I'll show you pictures of because like I never would have ate those things but when you see the animal die there's no way you're gonna let one part of that animal be wasted and that's this just complete reverence for the protein that we eat you know it's it is important for my body composition which is such a vain thing to say but it's true like that it is a complete game changer in what the way my body looks with my protein intake, even more so how my body is at a very cellular level. The, the cells that I have, if I do not eat meat, I become extremely anemic and depleted in B vitamins. And I can take supplements, but I already take supplements. So it's like, there are things that you first need to get through food and then cell cells can be taken care of through supplements and it just takes a lot of effort and work if you're a vegan and vegetarian to do supplementation um, to make up for what animal fat and what animal protein can give you. So uh, if nothing else, please eat eggs and eat ghee because it's a game changer for your, your mental health and hormone health. But knowing that I wanted to be a part of this was really good. I uh, drove, here's a big pot of Tulsi tea. <laughs> I find tea everywhere. And then here's the liver. So the same day, um, it was shocking. I really had no idea. It's just a video of me actually taking the liver from the lamb and swallowing it and like wildly loving it and feeling like, wow, my body needed that. And I think that's something again, like some people are so grossed out about because I used to be so grossed out about it, but it's so nutrient dense. And I also think there's like an overdoing of liver. There's only one liver for a whole animal, right? So say that you're getting a lamb or a cow and you're getting 30 pounds to hundred pounds of meat. That's one liver for in that entire animal. And so many people are doing liver every day and I understand why, but like, let's not be just takers of liver and recognize that liver is a delicacy and something to be reverenced and revered and I'm finding a uh, lot of hunters that are not using their venison liver. So that's the way I'm trying to source my liver now. And here's this beautiful farm. And here's me just doing a ceremony. There was a lot of the goddess Kali, K-A-L-I. If you do not know Kali, Kali is the Scorpio goddess of death and rebirth. And if you want things to change, you call her in fast. And um, it was just beautiful ceremony to try to really process the emotion of this death and rebirth, not just literally, but the figurative death that was happening in my life and just really moving and getting grounded. So here's a video of Jaylene and I doing an MPAC workout. Again, just lots of single leg stuff, lots of just enjoying the sun as much as I can. Here is tacos made from tongue. That was a whole experience as well. And just really appreciating food as much as I can sourced directly from the farms that I'm going to. So this is a really cool collection. This is comfrey and oyster mushrooms. And um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank at what that is. Oh, I cannot believe I totally forgot this like coconut aminos it's a root that looks like a ginger and a potato had a baby I'm going to think of it before this podcast is over but it's just like here's the cow tongue like that's I'm going to eat that because I can't believe that we're taking these lives and if I'm going to eat this then I want to eat all of it and uh, it just shifted for me and I hope it shifts for you in some way look at this moon some beautiful pictures and then some interviews with some farms and then I found motherwort Motherwort was literally, if you go to my Instagram, there is a uh, video on Instagram that is pinned and it's about motherwort and motherwort has a hand. It looks, see how it looks like a hand, kind of like actually mother marijuana, but there is a beautiful energy about motherwort that is about holding self and your heart. And so it also translates to lion heart. And I went to this farm to talk about apple cider vinegar and apple orchards. And here we are looking at a whole entire 
row of motherwort, which was obviously so needed. And it's in my van right now. And I'm giving it to everyone I love. It is such a powerful, energetic support for your heart chakra and for getting grounded. It's really bitter. So it's really good in tincture form. It's not good if you just take it, but I, I'll, I can eat anything. So obviously I'm doing cow tongue. <laughs> Uh, so then, yeah, just really appreciating. So here's some pictures of Griff and I appreciating some beautiful, you know, just buildings and li like listening to when I need to walk and move and take pictures. And here's some reishi mushroom and mullein, picking up more trash as much as I can, jumping in water every chance I get. It's starting to get really cold, but the water is life changing. And so this this park, I will say Jordan Lake State Park, it was my first love. This is where I really fell in love with the van. It's so funny because my first love when I was two years old was named Jordan. So I should have known. But this park, not only was it like full of animals and creatures and spiders and birds that follow Griff around and bald eagles swirling around my head but I it was right when Mars went retrograde and right when the eclipse happened and so I was driving or I was running I was doing a run because I thought I was going to do a Spartan race and my left foot totally got a stress fracture so this is right when my foot got a stress fracture and it was such a message from the universe like it is not time to run. It is not time to move. It is time to listen. And in my membership, my online membership, we talk about a, a lot of us are dealing with some left foot injuries. So I'd be, I'd love to know if you are too. It has since healed. And I've done a whole thing about how to heal it as quickly as possible. Cause that's just who I am. I can't help it, but it is energetic. It is wildly about us listening to the left side and flowing and not being in this go, go, go Mars retrograde, that's literally slowing down action. So it was a big sign not to do the Spartan race and to listen to my body and slow it down a little bit. So I did. I named my van Ixchel officially at Jordan Lake State Park. And then next to me was these two beautiful couples that um, it was a uh, Michelle, Maggie, Susan, Susan. I mean, there's just like this gorgeous group of two lesbian couples that took me on their boat. Here they are, Maggie, this is Maggie and Sue. And it was just the most fun. Like Jordan Lake State Park in North Carolina is crazy because it was actually a town that got flooded. So it had this crazy good energy with herons everywhere. And again, eagles everywhere. And of course, I jumped in the water because I'm a beluga and just so much fun, like just knowing that summer was coming to a close, but I was not going to let it. I was just not going to let it stop me from jumping in. Beautiful sunsets and then a trash pickup. And this is Chris Bernard Photography, who I will just do a little shout out that I feel like he should do a little better job with his trash picking up at Opta Highway. But you're welcome, Chris. Here's two bags of trash. And uh, it was easy. It was just a really beautiful way to say, okay, thank you, Jordan Lake State Park, for helping me fall in love with camping and finding a place and getting comfortable with the place and then I went to the North Carolina farmers market and this is where things really get weird because every single person in this farmers market sprays and uses pesticides and this is where the conversation needs to happen about what that means long term you know back to the original start of this conversation like this is getting into our water systems and polluting earth and killing a lot of life that we do not see and it's life that actually is important to us we don't just live in a place with other animals and creatures we live because of those animals and creatures the microbiome of the soil is actually deeply connected to who we are as humans so it is a hard thing to go into and realize that that's um just what's happening in the world and beautiful artwork and that my battery is going to die and we're at an hour so i'm going to stop at a uh, spot, just a few more slides. And I found cotton. So we'll stop in North Carolina where I found cotton. 
this is just a start. I am so grateful for this beautiful trip that I am on and this beautiful exploration of life that I am living. And there's so much more to say and so much more to explore and so much more to feel. And I cannot wait to share it all. And I'm so grateful for this adventure as I go and take more podcasts and do more podcasts and learn more about myself as I just go across the country and talk to farmers and drop into gyms and find matcha and just really just find myself you know this is about the the shell of I and I'm so grateful to share it and I hope that you are having such an amazing winter transition as well holding yourself finding your own version of your womb watching the birds and just really being in touch with what your heart is saying not what your head is saying until next time, big love.